the words which are heard may be the words of the truth of your gospel for the living of our days. These things we pray in Jesus' name, even as we pray around the message this morning. Change begins when you get rid of it, for we ask it in Jesus' name, all of it in Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. 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 One wise poet who was considering how hard it is for people to change and not just change, keep those changes in place permanently. Amen. Looked around at folks struggling with changes, trying to make them, trying to put them in place, trying to keep them in place and, and trying to leave their former selves behind and opined this way, said this very thing. Only when you get started, put in the work, push through obstacles, and overcome challenges, can you achieve anything in life. But unfortunately, most people live in this terrible wasteland called someday. Someday they will start working out. Someday. Someday they will follow their dreams and start the business they've been talking about for years. Someday. Someday they will get started and do what they should have been doing all along the way. Someday. And more often than not, someday becomes never. Before that never catches up with us, before that never handicaps us or robs us of our joy in Christ collectively and individually as God's people, consider the ways that our faith strengthens us, beloved. Before the world dampens our enthusiasm or tries its level best to beat us down, A.B. Myers confided in me, Pastor, this morning, I'm so glad we have a worship service at 8 o'clock in the morning. I said, you are ABs, and I am. We rarely see him at this service, but he said he was thankful for 8 o'clock service. When I finally got to the crux of why he enjoys 8 o'clock so much, he said, because, Pastor, it takes me out of the morning news cycle on Sundays. If I was at home, I'd be watching the news, and I'd be downright depressed. In fact, I know I'd be angry and I'd wake up angry and that angry would carry through my day and that angry would stop me from doing everything I need to do. I'm glad we have an eight o'clock service for him and for you. I would ask us all to remember Paul's encouragement to the Romans in chapter uh, in the eighth chapter of Romans and the, uh, the 28th and 29th verses. Paul encourages us there this way. To those who love God, who are called according to God's plan, everything that happens fits into a pattern for good. <laughs> to those who love God, called according to his plan, everything that happens fits into a pattern for good, the Presbyterian minister who famously wore cardigan sweaters on his television show for, for children, the one, you know, the show called for the ages, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, amen? Fred Rogers told the story of how his mother taught him that good wins out in the end. That if the changes we make are ultimately for our good and for the good of others, it's worthwhile always to pursue that change. Fred Rogers' mother told him that even in the world's greatest catastrophes, even in the world's worst disasters, don't, don't look, Fred, for all the suffering, pain, and heartache only. Fred Rogers' mother told him to look for the helpers, Fred. 
See, whenever something terrible happens, there are always people who hurry to help. Beloved, if, if there's some change you're making in your life at the beginning of this new year, that will enable you to become or to remain one of those hardy souls who hurry to help. Don't let any hesitation stop you or stymie you in your pursuit of your change. For each of us, the word says, each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. That's Ephesians 4, 7. It's right there in your text this morning. And that grace is a great thing no matter how old or how young we are. Amen? Story is told of a young girl, Brooke, age seven. We already heard from Nate, age seven and a half today. Amen? But the story is told of a young girl, Brooke, age seven, who wrote this semi-sweet note to her mom that only needed minor changes. Dear mom, she wrote, thank you so much with a whole lot of O's next to each other. So much for being my mom. If I had a different mom, I would punch her in the face and go and find you. <laughs> Love, Brooke. Oh, we all need grace, just like young Brooke. Amen. Grace to guide and keep us. Grace to bless and lead us. Amen. Grace for the word reminds us to put away our former way of life. Put away our old self corrupt and deluded by its lust, the word says. And, and this morning, I want to give you one way to do that very thing. One way. One thing to remember as we seek to set our feet on solid ground in 2019. Amen. If we want to change some outcomes in our lives, let's change our thoughts first. Proverbs 4.23 reminds us this way. Be careful how you think your life is shaped by your thoughts. One theologian noted that change always begins with new thinking. Amen? It is new thinking that will renew us from the inside out. It is new thinking that will help us remain on track, moving forward, pushing onward. God gives us the word for our instruction and correction, it said, but it is our responsibility, beloved, to use God's word, is it not? Mm -hmm. To take it and to run with it. That's, that's our responsibility, to use it for our good and for the good of others. And if it's not working out that way, amen, we need to make it work that way. Getting rid of the old self reminds us to get rid. To get rid of the old tired thoughts, the, the negative, self-defeating, and fatiguing thoughts that tie us down. And when it comes to the new self, Paul refers to here, when he encourages us this way, when he, when he says to, to clothe yourselves with the new self, Created according to the likeness of God in a true righteousness and holiness. When Paul speaks that way, he's not talking about the well oiled, worked out Mr. or Mrs. Universe body we can get at the gym. Consider for a moment this radical notion. Of what Paul might be pointing to here. Rather than change being something to fear. Change can be something we choose to fall in love with. <laughs> change can be something we choose to fall in love with. Theologian Kirk Byron Jones contends that though change is challenging. 
It is important to understand that we are not limited to viewing change exclusively in terms of stress, strain, and struggle. We don't have to view it all as negative. He suggests rather that we as believers, as change touches our lives, and we as believers dance through our transformation. Dance through it. As you consider your changes, as you consider your thoughts and your invitation to, to dr dance through your transformation this new year, this, this morning, let me add finally in all this, don't forget to make room for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> See, we can't make room for the Holy Spirit without taking it to the Lord in prayer, can we? Prayer is the secret of depending on the Holy Spirit. So this year, like no other year before, beloved, be incessantly in prayer. Pray about your decisions. Pray about your needs. Pray about your hopes. Pray for God's light of love to shine more brightly in your life. Pray for focus where there is uncertainty in your life.